Hello everyone, this is Deborah Jason and you're on the Marketing Blab with Deborah. So good morning or good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're calling in from. I'm Deborah Jason and I am the author of Millionaire Marketing on a Shoestring Budget and DebraJason.com. So I'm excited today to have my guest, Laura Rubenstein. Laura is calling in from San Diego, right? I am today, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and Laura and I have uh, been on a Google Hangout here and there, or I've been a uh, visitor to one of her blabs. We've never actually met in person. So I'm excited here to have her as my guest. She is quoted in my book. So welcome, Laura. She is a social media marketing strategist. And that's why she's here today, because we're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff related to social media marketing and to building and nurturing relationships using social media. So, Laura, first off, one question I have is you are a social media marketing strategist, but you're also a hypnotherapist. So do you manage to blend those two together in your business? And if so, how? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yes. But not in the way you probably think. Do I? Okay. I still do retain a small hypnosis practice and see clients in person, and also do Skype and things like that. But you know, hypnosis is all about being suggestible and being open to suggestion and positive psychology in many ways. So I use my background in understanding what motivates people in my writing, in my speaking, in my sales process, you know, so it informs a lot of what I do. And that's kind of why I wrote the book that you quoted in your book, um, mm -hmm. The Social Media Myths Busted, The Small Business Guide to Online Revenue, because I found people were hypnotized to think things about social media that completely blocked them. Mm. being successful and I wanted to remove the blocks and that's what I do as a hypnotherapist so it's a perfect question that you're asking because <laughs> when we're feeling resistance to something or we're feeling blocked by something we first have to address the block before we can move on and use it for our benefit so um, it's completely applicable to any business hypnosis and then it, it helps me be more effective with clients that's cool. Now, I know one of the things you and I talked about was um, maybe this relates to some of the blocks. People thinking social media is going to be my ticket to success. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's another so another myth, think, right? <laughs> another myth. We talked about all the myths. Some of them are resistance and some of them are like, all I need to do to solve all my marketing problems is come on to just put something on, on social media. It's kind of like the old myth that people used to think about yellow pages when they open a business. I'll just put an ad in the yellow pages and I'm going to get my phone ringing off the hook. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you know, since my book is about cost effective marketing and how to increase your visibility that way, what's what would you say is your most cost effective marketing strategy? Is it social uh, media marketing or something else? Oh, it's a combination, but um, on social media, the most cost effective is that private messaging tool that uh, most social networks have. Down. Facebook has it, Twitter has it, LinkedIn has it, and to each one, I would do a different strategy with. But it's your secret weapon for like you know, you're a relationship marketing expert. That's what I talk about. How do you build relationships with people in the real world? You have face-to-face -face conversations, you have phone conversations, well, you do the same thing online, but they're one-on-one. -on -one. So that's well, that's the most effective tool I can, you know, And point I want to. to let people know that, um, thank you, you wrote a guest blog on my blog. That's all about that. So if people go to writingdirection.com, slash blog and I'll put that in the uh, chat box you'll see the most recent post is from Laura she's already beat me to it um, <laughs> I had it up <laughs> I was like you don't want to ask about, about that <laughs> <laughs> so but, but what's your opinion about you know how do you make social media work to build and nurture relationships because I think there are a lot of people out there that really don't understand how to do that you know, making that transition from offline to online, if you're good at it offline, I'm here to tell you you're going to be good at it. You can be good at it online. 
just do very similar things. Think about what do you do to cultivate relationships offline? You want to make people feel special. You want to uh, speak, be consistently communicating with them, following up with them, finding out about their needs, finding out about what they love and is important to them in their life, right? If you go to a networking meeting, you're all about, okay, learn about who's here in the room and who do you connect with and then who can you help? And how do you do that online? Well, you are either in groups or you're connecting with people one-on-one -on -one who have similar like keywords that you think you can do business with or form a, you know, a partnership with in terms of a joint venturing or a collaboration and you just start getting to know people. You do it naturally. You don't try to sell because <laughs> it would be wow. like walking into that networking meeting and say, hey, Deborah, look, Buy my book. <laughs> I love if you want to, but um, you know, well, it's just you like, know, and you just brought up that no factor, which is just one piece of the no like and trust factor, which is really important because I think many people who are either online listening today um, or those who aren't have had that experience of somebody connecting with them, and then, like you just said, that's the first thing they do is send out a pitch before they've ever gotten to know, like, and trust that person. Yeah, and it's it's like asking someone to marry them on the first date. It's like, eh, it's <laughs> weird, right? You're like, ew, get away. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, one of the examples I give is similar to what you just said. You know, you go to a networking event, and someone, before they ever do anything else, they just take their business card, and they go, hi, here's my card. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, I don't know, you feel kind of icky because... They haven't even said, what's your name, or right. what do you do, or what brought you here today? So it's really important. I love that you said, you know, look at what you do offline and implement <laughs> the same thing online. And I know Robert, who's here listening today, you know, he says social media marketing is made up of two components, social media, your content, and the networking. You know? Yeah, and just look at those two words, social media. Social is the relationship, media is the content. Perfect. Love yeah. that. You know, but how does someone, what are your thoughts on, you know, how does someone position themselves as a thought leader in this space? Because there are so many. Well, it's a combination of those two things, using it in, in a very specific way. One in the media side is offer that value. Okay. So, and then, you know, see what other people are thinking about it. You know, is it resonating with them? Do you, if you and I love what you did, you're like the shining example of this. You went out and you um, quoted other people who are thought leaders. That makes you a thought leader because you're like curating all this. I did that very similarly in my book. Went out and curated people's um, concepts and put them together into a masterwork. Mm -hmm. So that positions you as a, a leader, a thought leader. So anything you can do to add to your industry knowledge, uh, your industry and the knowledge in the industry, even if it's just curating and then adding your overarching system to it or systemizing that um, curation is valuable. If you have your own system, add that to the mix, but start sharing it, start teaching it, start helping people with it. People will give back if you're giving. It's like that law of reciprocity, universal physics, spiritual, whatever right. you want to call it, law, but it works. It's like, do yeah. it. It's in the Bible even. Do unto others as they do unto you, or you want done unto you. And so for those who are watching, if you've ever read the book Influence uh, by Robert it. Baldini, he talks a lot about reciprocity. And to do it, you know, to give without the expectation of getting back. You know, it's not like, oh, if I do this, then they're going to do this for me. It's just to give because that's where your heart comes from. And that's where your message is, is to share information and to share value with other people. But you mentioned something um, about, you know, social media marketing is different for every industry. So how does one figure out, you know, which social network might be the best for them or which social network might be where their audience is hanging out? You know, how do people figure yeah. that out? Oh, I have a I have a little game show for us for this. Okay. okay. So I have the P's of social media. All okay. right. So I do this a lot in my my live presentations, but I thought I'd try it here on Blab with you because I knew you were going to ask this question. It's like the most popular question. Where do I need to be, right? So right. if we, I have an infographic coming out and a blog post about this, but you know, if you think about the different networks, 
here, I guess this is like a jeopardy. If I said the word, your business is prof based upon uh, professionals. professionals. Uh, what 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 uh, network is this, everyone? Put it in the put it in the chat box. <laughs> what network? Mm -hmm. If you're a professional B two B. Okay, I just said it, but let's see if anybody types in the chat box. All right, yeah. we got it. Yes, it's LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, now. What is the network that has the most demographics, widest diversity of people? So okay. if you're a consumer product, Facebook, <laughs> thank you. That's the P. Remember, Facebook I love is this. I'll spin a wheel. Okay. Oh, no. People. Okay. If this one <laughs> this one might trip you up, but uh, or get you think if you want to find out about different perspectives. Um, you want real time what's happening in your industry. You want to get connected with journalists. If those are any of your, your objectives, what, what do you think I'm talking about here? What What is all about perspectives? Twitter, yes, for 200. Yeah. It was this is Adam. You're on it, Adam. <laughs> is this fun? Are we having fun yet? Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now. If you read Guy Kawasaki's book, you'll know what network is all about passions. Mm, people talking about what they're an expert in and putting links back. And it's really good for SEO. And it's people who, you know, really want content. And it's one that a lot of people ignore. It's all about passions, oh. though. That's really what it's for. I've got any other players here? Yes, it is <laughs> Google Plus. Uh, okay, so those who didn't see what I put in the in the chat box, I said Google Plus. Yep, yep. So, oh, sorry, Adam, you're three three out of four. I say that's <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> what's his point score now? <laughs> all right, we should have done. <laughs> we have more. <laughs> yeah, we have two more. Okay, oh, okay, but so Adam, you'll get this one. It's all about the pictures. Do, 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 oh, well, do. I guess two of those. Yes. But when you think of really high quality pictures, you know, that lead back to somewhere, link back to somewhere, it is indeed oh, Pinterest. Pinterest? Yes. The other one you were thinking about, you'll find all kinds of pictures regarding pop culture. Yes. Okay. Those are my P's of social media. Do we love it? I love that. Was that fun? Oh, have you posted, did you say you posted that somewhere, like on your blog? Or it will be on my blog at transformtoday.com. So okay, well, that's transformtoday.com for those of us who are visual. Transformtoday.com. Okay. <laughs> we have to have fun, you know. It's like TV though, or something. the piece of social media. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Hey, welcome Deb for jumping on board. You just missed our little game show. That was cool. <laughs> we need to have a soundtrack. If anybody knows how to put in a soundtrack into Blab, that would be like so cool to have. We could get those that Jeopardy one. questions. Well, we could sing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So actually, I want to read um, from my book, but it's a quote that uh, I have from you, from your book. So let me find it. I think it's page 184. So, um, and this relates to um, the importance, you know, social media marketing, we all love it, it's great, but really the end result that you want is to get people to your website and to have people on your email list so that you own those names. Because one thing we've talked about is you can have thousands of followers on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, and if any of those go away, then you lose those people unless they're on your email list. And so Laura wrote something once about her experience that I want to share with everybody. And uh, she said, Laura, this is from my book, Laura Rubenstein, author of Social Media Myths Busted. And she's also, by the way, co-founder of Social Buzz Club. She put it this way. Suppose you've accumulated 50,000 connections between your top three networks. And one day your best most engaged network changes its rules or determines that you have violated their terms. They could remove your connections because of algorithm changes or worse yet, they could close your account and never let you have access with no good reason. And in the book, I go on to explain, but I want you to explain what happened to you, for example, with LinkedIn. And you know, here you were, because you're pretty popular, I'd say you're an influencer. 
and LinkedIn shut you down. So then what? Yeah. So, you know, I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. Uh, this was in the early days of LinkedIn when they asked, and they still do ask you, hey, do you want to upload your uh, email contacts into LinkedIn and we'll send invites out to, for you? And I said, okay, this was like 2005 or six. And uh -huh. so I did. And then at that time, it kept sending out email and sending out email to those people. And finally, they say, I don't know this person because what LinkedIn what did is they didn't take from my contact list or the, the contact list at the time was everybody who ever sent me an email, including you know, oh, people God. I signed up for their email lists, uh -huh. right? So they don't necessarily know me. And then, so they kept dinging me, ignore, I don't know this person. And then LinkedIn, all of a sudden I couldn't get into my account and I got a message saying you violated something. And I'm like begging for forgiveness, please, please. I, you know, I didn't do anything but what you told wow. me to do, <laughs> right? Um, so they did, you know, obviously reinstate me, but you run the risk of doing something you don't even know you're doing wrong or against their terms. Like anybody have two Facebook accounts, shame on you. You know, if they find out they might close one of those down. And if it's tied to the admin of something, you know, you're just like SOL. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, but you know, and let's bring that back to sort of, you know, people focusing on how many friends they have and how many followers they have. Um, and yes, I think, you know, people I know like yourself and other influencers, when you have a lot, a lot of fans and followers, it's very beneficial, but you let's go back to getting them to your website and becoming really yes. part of your tribe by email. Yeah. So you have to have a consistent practice of getting people into your home your own real estate, your email database, going to your website. You know, one of the first things, and I'm sure you preach the same thing, which is if people don't have a good solid website foundation, don't rely on social media to be your foundation. Use it, beef up your foundation. When my clients come to me, I need help with social media marketing. The first question I ask them is like, let's take a look at your website. How's your website? Usually they're a little embarrassed and that's okay because websites are always evolving. Mm -hmm. Let's get that up to speed. Let's make it the place that when we drive social media contacts there, they want to stay there. They want to engage with you. They love you even more. And that that's your, your social network in a sense. Your yeah. You create your own network of great content and you won't lose it if it's there. You know, if you're just po posting stuff on Facebook, all these great long articles, that's great. But you're building your business on rented land, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And actually, um, there's a couple of comments here from Robert and Adam. Robert said, you know, he just likes that LinkedIn only wants you to connect with people you know. <laughs> isn't the point to expand your reach and isn't that why we network? And isn't LinkedIn being um, giving double messages? They say that on the one hand, but on the next hand, the minute you accept somebody's request, this whole page, endless streaming page of contacts that you do you want to connect with this connect person? With. <laughs> so I don't really know what they mean. Um, they're being very double messaged in that. So yes, I I use. LinkedIn to connect with people I don't know, but who would be great contacts. And um, that's how I build my network, actually. Yeah, and I'm similar. You know, when I get an invitation, for example, from somebody I don't know, I don't actually um, automatically accept, especially if, and tell me if you agree with this, I think this is one of the biggest mistakes people make on LinkedIn in particular, and that is they send out a generic invite. They don't know you or they don't know you well and you get this message that says i want to add you to my professional network and i'm like well who are you and where did you find oh, me and i'm a that? double mind of that because yeah. the way linkedin op i used to be of that exact mind but the way linkedin operates today is when someone does put a personal message in it 90 percent of the time people don't see it because of the way linkedin's displays your requests mm -hmm. You can see the page of people who have asked for your request, right. unless you know to click the, or right. hover over, over that little message that they've actually edited. Um, and people, you know, that you won't necessarily know. And now I've almost, I, I haven't given up on personally messaging. I always add some sort of personalization to my messages because I come from that background of uh -huh. and philosophy. But I don't know that that most Everybody people see knows. that. 
No, that's an awesome point because when I speak about LinkedIn, I do show people up on a screen an example of that. Right. And yeah, I do hover over to see if it's a personalized message. But that's probably true that quite a few people don't know out there that they have that ability to do that or that they have the ability to even reply to that person before they accept. Right. No, and then once question. you accept it, yeah. you can't see that message again. It's like, where did that right. message go? And I've, I've been quick to to accept without looking at the message. I'm like, oh, maybe they had a special message and and, <laughs> and I didn't see it. And I've been too quick to, you know, like I have 400 waiting, you know, people right. who want to accept. And I, to your point, do I accept everybody? Not necessarily either. There's a couple of criteria I do. It's not so much in the message anymore. It's more I go and look at who they are. Are, are they someone in my field? Field? Are they someone who I is in my target audience? Like Robert, you were saying earlier, you you know the, the, the how do you determine where you should be? Not only are they there, it's well who's there? It's really who is your market there? So mm -hmm. if they're if they're part of my market, if they're um, a resource, apparently you can only have what thirty thousand connections. LinkedIn only lets you. That's what they say, but I've seen people that have more. Yeah. And then also you're only allowed to give uh, 3,000 connection requests, but I swear I've done more than that. But don't tell LinkedIn. Okay? Oh, no. <laughs> Keep it a secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting how it all comes together. And like you, I do tell people, you know, before you ever accept, go to the profile first, you know, and see who is that person. You know, do we have any common connections? Do does that person relate to something I'm doing in my industry? Could it be a good connection? And not necessarily somebody I could sell to, but somebody I can develop a relationship with and maybe be a referral resource or help in some way and, and you know, down the road, build that know, like, and trust so that it turns into some other relationship that has more value for you. Totally. So, I, I LinkedIn is one of my absolute favorite um, networks. I don't mean to bash it. Every network has its own glitches and things that, you know, this is the only the beginning of the 21st century. Soon we'll get to the Star Trek era, but you know, we're, we're we got to deal with these uh, minor issues. Uh, but I just love that LinkedIn has the intention of networking for business in it. So you don't have to like, step around things like in Facebook, right. nobody wants to be sold to nobody wants, you know, you have to really be very strategic and spend a lot of money to connect with somebody, <laughs> connect with your audience um, and ads if you really want to be seen for your business. So it's, you know, there are pluses and minuses to each of these networks and you're going to find your rhythm the longer you stay with it and the more myths you bust through, please bust through <laughs> those myths. Okay. Cause, um, don't let a myth just keep you stuck. It's, it's just not worth it. It's there's so much social good you can do and so much, so many people you can help with the things you are passionate about and the difference you're committed to making. Stay focused on that. That's like really why I wrote that book, why I'm here speaking to people. What I love doing is fueling other people's passions and using the best of social media to do that. And let's flood social media with positive you know, messages, positive and helpful, useful information. That's an awesome one, especially right now when there's a lot of, I don't know about you, but I'm ignoring all the political stuff. Um, yes. you know, and I don't Trying post to. political and I don't want to get into the political conversation, but you know, to me, that's not so positive these days, but there was something that um, Robert posted. He said, you know, and I think it doesn't just apply to LinkedIn. He said he finds out if people are active because no activity means that they're likely not even a good networking partner. And I find that even sometimes on Facebook, I'll go, somebody sends me a friend request and I go look and they haven't posted anything and who knows how long. So yeah, that's a, a good key that I think, you know, Robert brought up about, are they actually participating? Because so many people have thrown up a LinkedIn profile or even a Facebook profile and or Twitter you know, and don't do anything. And a lot of people throw up these fake profiles just to get followers and connections, right? So that's a good indicator of someone using it for spam. And there are those people on all these networks that are spamming, spammy type people. So <laughs> gotta be, uh, 
you know, or spammy accounts that they're just using. They, I mean, I got prospected by someone with a software system that says, oh, yeah, we set up a dummy account and we friend, we can make all these connections. And then we send them instant messages or in message, you know, you know, the in mail, but the, fr uh -huh. the messages, LinkedIn messages. And then, you know, we there you have leads. And I'm like, yeah, but that just sounds so icky, yeah. you know. Really? Yeah, is there really a <laughs> I wouldn't want that to be me in that way, you know. So remember that golden rule. You know, I mean, for no, those of us, social. you know, if you want to be genuine in what you're doing. Right. Uh, and real quickly, um, well, actually not quickly, because I want to bring up your book again. You know, Social Media Myths Busted. So why don't you share another myth that you'd like to bust with us? And then I'm going to open up the seat. Uh, that social media takes a lot of time. Okay. Okay. Um, That's a good one. So bust that one. <laughs> I'm going to bust right through. First of all, step away from the news feed. Step away from the news feed. There's no reason to go there in your business hours. Okay, you can do that on your free time, and if you want to stay up till two in the morning with that, that's fine. <laughs> okay, right. you want to make connections with individual people. I highly recommend you spend fifteen minutes a day doing the one-on-one -on -one connections, responding to comments, reaching out personally, and you know, one-on-one -on -one messages, posting a piece of content of your own, and then um, uh, you could look for specific people, create a list of specific people's content you want to comment on, and that's it. Okay, you know, just engage now, are you with talking people. about all the networks, though. Fifteen minutes might just be Facebook, or just I would choose different Facebook. networks on different days. I would, you know, depend on your top, make it your top three networks. Um, so, and you may not add content every day to every network, or you may have some other ways of adding content. I wouldn't. I really want you to focus in those 15 minutes on the one-on-one -on -one interactions, replying to comments, replying to messages, reaching out in private message. And you can do that fairly quickly if you're organized about it. Um, and then you can, the next, if you have more time, you can start reaching out to people to connect with them. And then if you still have time, your content, make a day to schedule content, you know, to use Hootsuite or HubSpot or whatever you like to use to post your, your content. Well, that brings up a question because I think there's been more recently some talk about people using Hootsuite and yep. people feeling like, well, that's not very personal because you're scheduling a tweet or something on Hootsuite. So that's not personal. That's what I'm hearing. I still well, use it quite a bit for Twitter mostly, but I do, you know, what's your feedback on that? Twitter. It's great for Twitter. Um, Facebook, even though... All the third-party apps will deny this. We are seeing that the reach on things posted from a third-party app is not as great, especially mm -hmm. if you schedule everything. However, Facebook has its own scheduling tool for the pages. And, you know, your personal, you can, you know, manually post something there if you want the, the reach yeah. as well. So... The impersonal part, I don't worry about too much. If you're offering quality content, that's no matter how it's been posted, it's there. You know, your job is to really think what your market is craving and satisfy that craving. Well, and Robert said he uses a balance between scheduled and real time, and I kind of do the same thing. Um, but is it Stephanie is asking a little bit more about Facebook scheduling. So Stephanie, maybe you're not familiar with on your fan page that you can schedule something. You don't have to post it right then. Um, is that the question that you have? And why don't I actually open up a seat? Okay. And Gloria says she doesn't see that Hootsuite hurts her reach on Facebook, um, but does, she doesn't use it exclusively. I love that. I, that's great. I'm glad to hear it. That means you're probably producing the content that people are craving. And Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we got. Um, it looks like Stephanie's calling in, and Stephanie, hi there. Here she comes. Hi, hey, hi Stephanie. There, so that's that's a whole new one for me about Facebook scheduling in the uh, in their own app because I've been using a mix of Hootsuite to pre-schedule stuff, and then you know going in live time too. So can you talk about the the in app? It's it's the business pages for the okay. business pages only, not the personal. I would love for them to do the personal. <laughs> so when you when you go to, you know, write something, uh, there's an option to say when you want it 
to post, to be published. That right is next to the to publish me. button. Yeah, yeah, just right in there and it says publish. If you scroll, you'll get a little drop down and it'll say, I think it says schedule post. And then okay. it asks what day and time. Now, Laura, I haven't tried that on my phone, but I don't think you can do it from your phone. I think I do. you have to do it from your desk. I, I don't do anything from my phone. Don't don't ask yeah. me to do anything from my phone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's too, I'm it's too fast too a typer. It's like, you're going to slow me down with my phone. Forget it. <laughs> it's too small, but right? I do actually think there is a way. I just, uh, it's just a little different than is on. Because somebody yeah. said the opposite to me. I, always, I see it on my phone, but I don't see it on the. Oh, know. really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, so I'm, go to your fan page, Stephanie. And when you're actually getting ready to post something, there'll be a little arrow that drops down and you can say, I want to schedule this for tomorrow or, you know, for Friday. And so, and so are you, did one of you say that that is getting um, better and better um, algorithms or whatever? It's uh, they're getting out more than like Hootsuite? Well, I is think the theory is if you do that from that, Facebook likes it better when you do it from Facebook than if you use a third party app like Hootsuite. Okay, That's but Gloria said she doesn't see any, so it's on a case by case. Let's. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank sure, you for coming. For jumping in. on. If anyone else wants to jump on board, feel free to do so. Welcome Ashton for uh, joining us. And um, there was a question I was thinking of, which is about you know we're talking about social media, and that's just one channel, one marketing channel. There's many other things that people can do, but how do you determine if you're marketing in the right channel for you? If you're getting results, is it, well, that's one way. If you're getting results now, you may not be doing the right strategy there. It's a lot of trial and error. And it's about setting goals up front. What do you want to have happen? And making sure they're realistic and working with somebody who has experience. And um, we know some general guidelines about that kind of thing, right? We know that in Facebook, if you need to, if you want to be seen by your target audience and you have business content, you definitely want to pay for some of that, you know, through ads. Um, unless you've created a really viral community that's used to checking your page and used to liking your content and loves your content. A lot of people call those passion pages because they're hot topics. So you don't need to pay as much, but even, but if you want to, kick it up a notch, then you pay for it. It's not super expensive, although to put together a strategy to like fill seats in a, in a, a seminar, a web, you know, a live event, people spend thousands a day on ads. So don't be, so if you have big goals, you pay big money <laughs> to get well, those goals. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, you know, um, because so many people have gotten over time used to the fact that they didn't have to pay, you know, and the actual, the question I want to ask you is what's your feeling about, you know, paying for ads versus boosting a post? Do you have a strong feeling one way or the other as to what's if your you, preference? It depends on your goal. If you just, if you want to build the likes up on your page and you're not wanting to spend a lot of time on the ads and you don't have a big budget, you can certainly boost it. It'll help to some degree. You can target it to some degree. The more specialized the niche you want to target, the more you want to use ads, the ads manager and even the power editor. So to me, Facebook ads is an art and a science. I don't mess with it. I actually outsource that because to do it right, to get the most out of your, you know, for your money, you want somebody who's watching it vigilantly, tweaking it and, um, testing the the creative and cre developing creative that works meaning the the copy and the uh images so it's, it's so you actually have somebody that does that for you i do i i work in conjunction with them or depending on the client either i work directly with the ad company to convey what the client needs mm -hmm. um or the client goes directly to them just depending on how savvy the client is <laughs> Well, we have Ashton, who, by the way, is um, here from the UK. So thanks for joining us because it's probably seven hours later, I think, than Colorado or yeah. six. But Ashton saying, you know, having to pay is simply a reality of marketing. As channels mature, they have to maintain profitability. Therefore, if you don't want to advertise, you must jump on a platform early when organic reach is easily gained, such as on Instagram. Um, so what's your, do you have any feedback on that for Ashton? Uh, I think he's right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yes. So the earlier you're in on a social network, the more visibility you have probably gotten and then they monetize it and they make it a little diff more difficult. So don't be hesitant to jump on a network you're not really even if you're not really ready to to go forward on. I just think um, I just think it's 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 social media is the, the wave right now we're in. So we have a seat, you know, we have two seats open if anyone wants to jump on. I see Ashton does have a question, and that is, what are your thoughts about Snapchat? I, I, I know very little about Snapchat, to tell you the truth. I use it, I have, but I don't use it for marketing yet. So I'd love somebody to pop on and say what they do with it. Um, yeah, I haven't gone to the Snapchat world yet either. Um, I know we have some mutual colleagues that are big on it, but um, right now I feel like I'm juggling enough. <laughs> hey, Robert. Hey, Jilly. Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Hello. Jumping on Did you so, um, why don't So why don't we start here first with you, Jilly. Do you have a question for Laura? Well, I was going to ask about Snapchat also. Um, getting, getting ready to <laughs> Hey, Robert, you know about Snapchat? No. Yeah. It's well below, well below my expertise. <laughs> well, that might be that might be a concept for me for another blab is to find this Snapchat. Yeah, right. I did yeah. read there is a good uh, link, uh, you know, that I I've been meaning to read. If I can find it during the blab, I'll put it in. Um, it's kind of like the beginner's guide. And I noticed uh, Deb Coleman, you're on the line, and um, I noticed your Twitter has the Snapchat like ghostly looking thing. Are you do you, do you have anything to say about Snapchat? Anybody else have? Um, well, so and we have a comment, you know, uh, I social fans, which is Brian Fanzo, I believe. Oh, I love Brian. Yes. On Snapchat. Um, Joel Com has been really big about Snapchat. I think he might have just actually wrote a blog about it or is doing a webinar about it. Um, I think Michael Stelzner at Social Media Examiner is on Snapchat and all of them rave about it as a business tool. However, when I've seen people posting stuff on Snapchat, it's, you know, hi, I'm out here eating cupcakes. So <laughs> I know brands get a whole big, you know, platform to play on on that. And I don't know what the difference between being a brand and how you get that. You probably pay for it is what I'm guessing. But who knows? Well, Deb is saying she says it's a business tool in terms of establishing relationships. So that's what we've all been talking about, you know. I know the, the millennial market loves it. So, yes. Um, well, I, I was going to bring up, uh, if you do a lot of things that are visual, I think Snapchat's very um, uh, a valuable tool. Let's say you're making cakes or you're a jewelry designer or an artist or a dancer. You might be able to um, share as you're in the middle of something and, and creating it. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, but it seems to be more effective one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've been using it just a little bit. Um, and and all, they're adding in features, like you can save okay. it. You can, uh, whereas in the past, mm -hmm. everything well, disappeared. There's, there's um, um, effects that you can do. I have a friend who puts, you know, bunny ears on and all kinds of stuff. Um, I just right now don't get it. So, Robert, did you have a question? <laughs> Some of us right now know enough to talk about Snapchat. Robert, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Thanks for jumping on board. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. No, Laura, I, I, one thing you mentioned, staying off the news feed. Um, <clears throat> I actually use the news feed because part of it is that's the way I can build my build relationships a little faster and a little deeper because I'm I'm involved with them personally, so that's a lot of the content time for me. Mm -hmm. And then the other note is. I don't. I try not to pay for anything other than an event that I'm running. Um, I want it done organically. Um, I spend probably about seventy percent of my time actually engaging on the content of others, getting involved, adding value on their comment, what on content on what they post, and mm -hmm. I'm finding in the end that rather than worrying about organic reach, which I think uh, Agora Pulse has an average of smaller pages at about forty percent organic reach. I'm about eighteen percent. But engagement is about 6.6%, and I'm hovering about 20% on engagement. Nice. And the difference is the time I'm spending on the content of others is actually driving people back to say, who is this person? And they're coming back to my profile. Nice. So, and the, I think the big difference in the last two weeks, I've had posts that are two and three months old actually seeing engagement still. So, I love it. 
Um, I wonder, though, your newsfeed, how are you filtering what do you care who shows up on that? Or because I love the idea of creating lists of people you really want most want to engage with. Everybody, everybody I'm friends with has a specific list and I've got dozens of lists. So I will accept a friend request from almost everybody because I can control who sees what and post personal content they don't see. And then there are days I'll filter the list. Other times I just run through it and I'll take maybe 10 minutes and there's a stopwatch basically. And if there's something of value that somebody posts or interesting, I'll comment, I'll engage. They see me, I'm visible front and center, and then I'm gone and back to what I'm doing. So it's not that I'm not on it. I've been very disciplined with the little stopwatch to say, that's it, 10 minutes is up, I'm done. Yeah, most people aren't. That's why I gave the generic advice. Yeah. And so the other thing is to create lists and go, don't go to the generic news feed, go to your list feeds um, and engage where you want, with whom you want, um, because yeah, otherwise, I don't know, I'm ADD, I would go down a rabbit hole and I start engaging. If you can be disciplined, do, Robert, that's like the best. <laughs> yeah. cool. And I love the suggestion about finding specific people. So there are maybe six or seven people and I have just for what it's worth, a little list on paper of all the things I should be doing. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I'll check them off as I get there. I don't get there today. I'll just start wherever I left off the next day. So I run my cycle. Um, and that's a list of people? And there's a list of people and pages, and then just a general reminder to go check out the news feed on LinkedIn today or go pop into my LinkedIn groups. Just yep. so I'm always active in one spot or another. or another. And then I just- That's kind of what Laura was saying earlier. You know, when, I, when we talk about 15 minutes, it's like, take some time, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so that you don't feel overwhelmed every day. <laughs> yep, I love it. Yeah. Ashton's got a question for us. Thank you. Um, Jilly, uh, I want to let Ashton come on if he wants to. So are you okay if I... Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Um, I wanted to um, uh, ask also about topics. Uh, uh, the way I do things too is I, I, I have uh, topics that I relate to or that um, I'm able to help service or help uh, in some way, shape or form in connection with topics that are going on today. Um, and I'll do searches in regards to that and add that to my list. So first thing in the morning, I'll have my relationships that, that are very important to me uh, to um, uh, talk to and do lists, just like you said. But I add topics in rather than um, just the feed. So that um, I found that I have been getting overwhelmed by the, the feed too. And I want to connect with everybody, but you just can't. So there's just a few people that... Um, that I've narrowed down my circle, so to speak, uh, and found that to be helpful. And have you found topics to be helpful? Yeah, like uh, trending so topics? Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, not just trending topics, but topics that that you work with, too, mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, uh, so that, because a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of people on Facebook who have absolutely no interest in what you're doing, but you still are are friends from something or some such or their relative or something, but they really, what they're, there really is a, a connection in regards to what you need to do every day. So I'll have my own personal topics. And I found that to, to be really resourceful. Um, I think it's great. I mean, you all have to know. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. Are you doing it with a hashtag? Well, well hashtag, hashtag is sometimes, but sometimes you just do a little search and you find, um, I want to talk to the people that I went to school at Carlsbad, California with um, at the Chopra Center. So I'll just narrow it down to some of those people that are teachers and trainers that I work with um, and find out what's trending today there. And then I'll focus in and narrow it's in on that. a great alternative way. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and yeah. make that a great, another way, yeah. a great way to, to search on topics and participate in conversations. Again, to stay away from the news feed, but to stay focused on yeah. topic, on on and stay on track and make the best use of your time. So awesome. Great idea. Thanks. That's just my two cents. I'll get off so somebody else Yeah, we'll see on. if Ashton wants Thank to you hop on. Much. Thanks, Julie, for being here. Ashton, You're welcome. Um, if you want to jump on board, Ashton, we do have a seat. If not, we can just ask your question to Laura. Um, but we'd love to see if you want to hop on from the UK. But Ashton's question is, how much are influencers a part of your client's social media marketing strategy? 
<laughs> huge. <laughs> Influencers are hugely important um, because they're the ones who can position you as a thought leader. You know, the more you engage with an influencer, uh, you know, in different ways, whether it's to bring, you know, attention to their content, that's that actually positions you pretty well. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> hey, this good guy, you got to check him out. He's, you know, like, buddy. <laughs> the other way is to reach out and do collaborative work together. The other way is to show up at meet at events in person and network with them and meet them and bring them on shows. Um, you can definitely, I mean, there's so many ways you can use influencers, um, but I always, if, and there are paid ways also. So, you know, I have a whole influencer network that I developed. We haven't even talked about that. <laughs> well, we've got a few minutes here if you want to talk about that. Yeah. I, think one, I, I think the one thing is also to make sure that you're being very genuine when you're doing it. You're not... Yeah. Like you said before, it's not a method of trying to improve my standing. It's a matter of I'm actually trying to help you. And right. if your ideas coincide with mine, I'm going to promote them simply because the ideas are the same where you've expanded upon something I think about. And I think for most of my influencers, that's really what it comes down to. It's like, wow, they're speaking my language. I don't hear that enough. So, you know, it gives it, it gives some credibility to myself, but I'm more getting out information that I'm not necessarily the only one that thinks this way. Yep, exactly. Well, you know, and that's awesome because Robert, like Laura and I, you know, talks a lot and believes a lot about building relationships. Um, yeah. And I think that's what connects me to some of the people that I have as guests and that I connect with online. It's about that nurturing of relationships and the relationship marketing aspect of it. Um, and so, you know, just as a quick aside, I want to thank Laura for being here because you know, like I said earlier, we haven't met and Robert and I haven't met in person, but we've connected online. And that's the beauty of social media marketing. As we started out very early on saying, you know, do what you do offline, do it online and you'll connect and, and build relationships. So yeah, that's, that's the big yeah. piece. And so many people focus so much on the content when they're posting, how they're posting, what time they're posting that they forget about the whole networking piece. <laughs> Hello. Yep. It's like it's that per first social word. It's like relationships first, and if you just keep that in mind, you're good. To, you're golden. You yep. know, with influencers, with whoever. I mean, that's what we find on Social Buzz Club as well. Is you know, yeah, you, you can share other people's content out, and then they want to reciprocate and share your content out. It's like duh. Well, good timing, Laura. Because one of my next questions is that you do have a powerful tool that people can use that will help them get their message out in a bigger way. And that's Social Buzz Club. So why don't you tell people about that? Well, if you have good content, like blog content, and you want other people with, you know, lists to share it, you know, large social network followings and smaller ones, but that are targeted, um, then Social Buzz Club is, what is a network to consider. We're a membership platform where that's what we do. We gamified content sharing and we made it really reasonable shall we say nice. <laughs> yeah um so it, it's just a really nice way for people to it's we gamified it so it's very you have to share other people's content and earn points so that you can then submit your own content for sharing and so it ensures people get people with good content it's self-policing as well if you put a piece of spam content in there and nobody shares it and you wonder why you know why because it's <laughs> i'm putting myself on the it. line to share it you know, to my network. And why would I share a piece of spam content? I'm going to share. So those people kind of don't participate. We have incredible content on there. And we're always looking for more diverse content. So, um, yeah, if anybody's interested, you could always email me at laura at socialbuzzclub.com and tell, you, tell me you were on this call, uh, this blab, and I'll give you some extra bonuses. So I'm putting that in the chat box. Laura at socialbuzz club.com club. mm -hmm. and there's also the url in the chat box it's socialbuzzclub.com yep. so yep. If people are interested they can check that out and deb was saying um that she finds it's a, a really cool community it's an amazing community is what deb coleman said so mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that deb if you want to jump on mm -hmm. deb um we have a few moments left to uh have somebody jump on and take a seat and Stephanie is saying that Social Buzz Club sounds great. So um, it's socialbuzzclub.com for those of you that want to find out about it. And Laura, where can people find your book? 
a book they can find it at transformtoday.com or socialmediamythsbusted.com. <laughs> so, so I'm going to tell it's you everywhere. That it's, it's everywhere I am. Uh, I probably should put it on uh, Social Buzz Club. <laughs> <laughs> in a link on LinkedIn. It's it's in a link on LinkedIn too. Yes, thank you. Are well, we? Are we got, uh, one more person calling in. We've got Deb calling in, who's been saying what an amazing community you have. <laughs> hey, Deb. Um, how are you? I hope. Do we have audio? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're good. Yes. I sometimes worry, so I didn't want to take your time if I was going to have an issue. Um, well, thanks awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy I found you. I found you through Laura. Saw her tweet, so I thought, oh, this will be awesome, and it's a great conversation. <laughs> Um, I don't really have a question necessarily. I mean, I just completely um, agree wholeheartedly about relationship first and that, you know, there's a strategy, but if it's based on that, that's just true to you and your personality, that the business comes. And I love Social Buzz Club. I'm new to it. But um, as Laura says, that if you have content to share that's of quality, you have an opportunity connect to connect with people who are of like minded and you know we're not just tweeting out we're reading people's blogs and commenting on the blog i mean true engagement true support and um i just love that i stumbled upon your lab this way because it's really awesome deborah um we well, really i'm glad you stumbled hope yeah. you didn't hurt yourself while you stumbled <laughs> no <laughs> I never. really well, that's fabulous. Well, tell us what you like about Social Buzz Club. It sounds like you said engagement. And how long have you been on it? Uh, it's so new. It's only just this month. I've known okay. Laura, um, and but only recently got in there. And I blog, and I am in other groups, like through Facebook, where we really engage with each other's blogs. And that's kind of, um, it's it's rare. <laughs> You know, and, and actually, I know Stephanie, she and I were just talking about there are a lot of places that allow you to post your blog, but no one reads it. I mean, maybe they'll share it, but they're not reading it. They're not commenting. And to me, that's really the beauty of social media. When you take the time to really read people's content that you care about and support them in a way that really makes a difference when you're commenting, you're tweeting out something. And Social Buzz Club does just that. Uh, it, it's it's you know, you don't necessarily have to read the blogs, but, you know, I like to do that because I don't really like to tweet out content that I don't know exactly what it says, but you, know, you have the option to do it whichever way you prefer. Um, but it's really nice and it's true that people end up supporting you back if you supported them, but there's no obligation. It's just kind of a nice thing to do. It's like real life, you know? And um, the same is true, I think, of all the social media platforms and, um, you know, Snapchat included, although I'm really new to that, uh, I feel like it was worth a look because just like the live streaming like this, it's um, new arenas for businesses and it's worth checking out because people are making a difference. And it's because it's it really, I think it's the relationship based content marketing strategy. <laughs> And if that's what well, you're really all about. This one is one of our viewers, Deb, is asking, what is your blog? So what's the URL? Oh, we've already got oh, Laura who responded. Oh, oh, that's nice of you. Thank you so much. Yes, it's all about communication strategy, writing, editing, periscoping, um, that type of thing. So thank you. DebHillman.com slash blog. I want to let you know that Deb has already been contributing to Social Buzz Club. She's volunteered to do, um, since she is a writing coach, to enhance our writing at social buzz club so um we she's volunteered as one of our deans of blog marketing that's awesome well robert since we have you on the screen as well you have a blog don't you yes why don't we share your blog with everybody it's under tacticalsocialmedia.org and the blog address is backslash uh social media memory serves me i don't remember exactly okay so i'll just put the urls tacticalsocialmedia.org. Yep. Okay. So that's and most, well. Yeah, and most of what I'm writing about is, is ways to leverage some of the features and things that come out and look at it a little bit differently on that relationship side instead of simply, you know, I, I listen to most people and it's, oh, here's the new feature, here's how to use, you know, here's how to use it. And my 
take is to try and figure out how to actually leverage it to get something above and beyond the way the feature may have been intended. So I know for Blab, there's the option I came up that now you can embed the Blab onto your website. And I looked at one option as to, I can create a specific page just within my website for my Blabs kind of thing. And actually that's where the player gets embedded. So it's on a specific page and one specific URL on your site you give out as opposed to the Blab address. So when you go live, it's always on that page. Oh, that's awesome. I haven't tried that one yet. So that's a new tip for me. Mm -hmm. um, but we're coming up on, oh, before we go, let's see, all the questions look like they've been answered. Um, we're coming up on the end of the hour and I wanna respect Laura's time. Laura, why don't you once more tell people how they can find you and your book and we'll make sure everybody can connect with you however you want them to. <laughs> Transformtoday.com is my blog. Um, you can certainly check out socialbuzzclub.com and email me at Laura at Transform Today. I mean, Laura at transformtoday.com or Laura at socialbuzzclub.com all goes to the same place. Uh, it's been so great to be here with everyone. And I love the interaction and the community here that you've created, Deborah. So thank you. Well, thanks for taking time out of your day to join us. And thank everybody for being here that's been a viewer. Um, I'm Deborah Jason at the Marketing Lab, Marketing with Deborah. And I thank you all for joining us today and taking time out of your day. And next month, I will have a guest, Zhuja Novak. And Zhuja is a business strategist. And so that'll be April, I think it's 15th. Um, it's not yet up on my Black Chat Lab channel, so stay tuned. And I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, once I go off the record, I will stay on for a few minutes if anyone wants to jump on that didn't really want to be on the record. <laughs> but thank you all again. Have a fabulous Friday. Have a great weekend. For those of you celebrating Easter, enjoy the holiday. And bye-bye, everyone. Thanks again, Laura. Really thank appreciate you. it. Bye, Deb.